So then he goes on to say, hold fast to what you have. Let me read you what Paul wrote to the Corinthians. For who regards you as superior? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not receive it? 1 Corinthians 4, 7. Whatever we have, we've been given. Absolutely everything. Okay? Everybody wants to say, well, I accomplished this, I did this, I earned this, I got... Do I know something? Everything I have is a gift from God. All good gifts come from God. That's what it says. Let me ask you a question. What would you answer if somebody were to say to you, what do you have? Remember, he said to you, hold fast to what you have. If somebody comes up to you and says, what do you have? What would you, what would you answer? Is this like a banker asking for a financial statement? You know, you list your assets on one side and your liabilities on the other. Your debts on the one side, and, you know. And then you see what lies in the balance and that's your net worth. Is that what? Okay. Remember, a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. 1 Corinthians 2.14 we are supposed to appraise all things spiritually. So, I am going to give you, I'm going to lay myself bare here and give you my net worth. I'm going to give you a, a balance sheet. Okay, first I will tell you my debts. Zero. Hallelujah. When you were dead in your transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us that was hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. No debts. Debt free. Debt free. My assets. Jesus. Hallelujah. I am my beloved, and he is mine. And what did it cost? It cost Jesus Christ. It cost him. It was a free gift. You know, I, I say it's a free gift. We've all come to say salvation is the free gift of God. The fact is, there was never a gift that cost more than that free gift. Yes. It's free to us. It's free to us. It wasn't free to God. He paid His Son, Jesus Christ. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. Song, Song of Solomon 6.3 So, if you take no debt, and my assets are Jesus, then my net worth is Jesus. It's simple logic. It's all here in the Word. It's simple arithmetic. And our net worth, that value, is established and proven by this fact. Paul wrote twice to the church at Corinth and to us that we were purchased with a price. The price was Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Almighty God did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, is what Paul wrote to the Romans. And to us, Romans 8.32. What we have is Jesus. What we have is the Word. He is the Word made flesh who dwelt among us. He is more desirable than gold, much fine gold. Psalm 19.10. What we have is wisdom from above, and pure gold cannot be given in exchange for it, nor silver be weighed as its price. Job 28.15. What we have is worth more than silver and gold. Worth it's more precious than silver and gold. Mm. What we've been given that connects all of the dots, so to speak, is faith. God has dealt to each man a measure of faith. Romans 12, 3. And that is what he said he will be looking for when he returns. Now, will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night? And will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Luke, 17, Luke 18, 7 and 8. Hold fast to what you have. Faith. Because that's what connects it all together. That's what connects the love. That's what connects the power of the word. It's faith. Now I believe that the great warning or encouragement from the Lord here to us his people in the last day 
that wonderful, great, and terrible day of the Lord is that we should guard our faith, which comes from hearing His Word. That's why there's such a, an attack, attack on, on the Word. Right. Okay? Remember that He had just said to the church at Philadelphia that He would make the world know that He loved us because they had kept His Word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by, the by the Word. Romans 10, 17. Fear comes by hearing. Hearing the world. And yes, there's an all of the difference. Yes. That's what it says in Psalm 55, verses 2 and 3. David said when he listened to the enemy, when he paid attention to what the world was saying, he became very distracted. Yes. He became nervous and distracted. You have a choice. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, be careful what you listen to. You have a choice of what you're listening to. I mean, I, I pray that you're, you're listening to this. Because you share a love for the Word. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could be watching some silly reality show on television. You know what? You listen to the world. And listen means pay attention to, right? If you take it in, you're going to grow in fear. Yeah. So you listen to the Word of God. You listen to what Jesus has to say. And you will be anxious for nothing, even in these perilous last days. When peace like a river Attendeth my way When sorrows like sea